This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for tuning in today. I'm Asia Gore. The Iranian nuclear deal already on thin ice is even more uncertain after the Israeli government claimed it has proof that Iran lied about its nuclear program. CBS's Hena Doba has more. Iran lied. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu claims to have evidence that Iran has lied about the shape and scope of its nuclear program. After signing the nuclear deal in 2015, Iran intensified its efforts to hide its secret nuclear files. On Monday, Netanyahu unveiled what he said were thousands of documents taken from Iran's atomic archive. He said they proved Tehran was developing nuclear weapons, even as it said power plants were its only nuclear goal. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo discussed Iran while flying back to the U.S. from the Middle East. This will belie any notion that there wasn't a program like this. The Iranian nuclear deal was signed in 2015. President Trump has until May 12th to recertify it. I'm not telling you what I'm doing, but a lot of people think they know. And on or before the 12th, we'll make a decision. One Iranian official described Netanyahu's presentation as ridiculous and said the evidence was fabricated. Anadoba, CBS News, New York. Russia and the European Union say they're committed to maintaining the deal with Iran. Meanwhile, the first wave of migrants traveling in a caravan from Central America have finally reached the U.S.-Mexico border. U.S. custom officials say they are now processing more than half a dozen people who are seeking asylum. Hundreds more are waiting to make their case after a month-long journey. Here in Montana, the hungry horse man fatally shot in Flathead County last week was apparently killed during a dispute over money. 47-year-old James Quinn of Martin City is charged with the murder of 33-year-old Bradley Winters. According to court documents, several people were fighting outside the victim's home before Quinn pulled out a gun and fired several shots. Winters was hit in the chest by one round. By the time authorities arrived, Winters was dead. Investigators are still looking for two potential witnesses. Following the arrest of a former school employee, drug testing finds no residue in the woman's office at Missoula's Metal Hill Middle School. Marie Dibble, a former school social worker, was recently arrested on multiple drug charges. A school spokeswoman says a restoration company tested Dibble's office but found no drug residue. Dibble was fired after authorities allegedly found meth, heroin, and psychedelic mushrooms in her home. Helena police are calling the death of a person discovered on a hillside last week suspicious. The man's body was found Friday across from Reader's Village. A pair of hikers called 911 to report finding the body behind the apartments on the 400 block of West Main Street. Due to the decomposition of the body, authorities have not yet identified the man. The body is being examined at the state crime lab. The community of Absorki held a vigil for the woman presumed drowned in the Missouri River in Great Falls last week. Nearly 100 attended last night's candlelight vigil to remember 21-year-old Brittany Roberts. Search and rescue crews spent most of Monday looking for her. The search has been hampered, though, by weather and debris in the water. Monday night was a moment for the community to gather in prayer and rally around the family. This is truly... I hate to put it like this, but one of the best nights I've had in seven days is being right here, right now. Because I can feel all the love, and and like Pastor Ralph has been talking about the light, I can I can feel the warmth of the light right now, and I haven't felt it in seven days. These seven days has felt like seven years to me. Brittany leaves behind a one and a half year old son and a fiance. A teenage girl is dead after crashing her car near Wilsell last night. Montana Highway Patrol says 16-year-old Lily Auger veered off the right side of the road on Highway 89. The girl overcorrected, causing the vehicle to roll down a ravine. Auger was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected. No other vehicles or passengers were involved. Speed and inexperience are cited as factors in this crash. Residents in western Montana are dealing with flooding today. The Clark Fork River above Missoula is forecast to reach 11 feet. That's a foot above flood stage. Flooding is already happening in the Sealy Lake area and along the Highway 83 corridor. MTN's Augusta McDonald brings us an update. 
A flood warning was issued Monday afternoon by the National Weather Service for the Potomac and Sealy Lake region. Near Sealy Lake in the C Street area, rural roads are already underwater and flood waters have reached homes. But they aren't the only neighborhood. People south of Sealy Lake have piled sandbags along the edges of the structures that they're trying to protect from these rising flood waters. In the Placid Lake area, water is flowing through front yards and driveways. At the Missoula County Extension Office north of Sealy Lake, there are sandbags available on a first-come, first-served basis. Near Sealy Lake, Augusta McDonald for MTN News. Thank you, Augusta, and the warning does remain in effect. Still ahead on the new news, May Day protests in Paris lead to mayhem. We'll take you there next. But first, Ed has our weather forecast. Stay with us. You're watching MTN News with Asia Gore, Storm Trekker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Egg Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.